Continue. No need to get in because you're a bunch, man. I know, I'm sorry, Brand, but you're not the only one saying things. By this, everyone is like chatting about me. Like there's a lot of whispers going on, like the boys are in there, like mobs are beginning to like say shit to me when I go across the campus. Shit is going on, it's going crazy. It's okay, it's okay, Brand says. But you know, truth is you're only acting like an adolescent boy. And it's only because you're frustrated. God, I'm like, frustrated is not the word, Brand. I'm going to start bringing my hair. Everybody wants to flirt with me, but nobody wants to like do for the fucking goods. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, when you've never had sex before and you know you want to have it with a woman, it's like the, the it's like it's like I don't know. It's like heroin, you're an addict and you're on this side, and every girl that walks by, you're just panting, like, okay, maybe she'll do it with me. <laughs> <laughs> the only time in my life that I have ever felt this kind of like indiscriminate desire <laughs> is when I was trying to get pregnant, and like every man who walks by, I'd be like, I should hold him down and just like jerk him off and like collect his arms. So you're really interested in this lesbian thing, eh? <laughs> Brent asks. I'm not a lesbian, I say. If I'm anything, I might be bisexual and just might. Okay, so if you're so bisexual, how come you're not attracted to any boys? <laughs> well, I mean, I have been, you know, in the past. I'm not attracted to anyone right now, any boy right now. I don't even know if this bisexual thing is really serious. Maybe I'm, in maybe, maybe I'm interested in exploring. Really, it's a real <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, so anyways, we quarrel, we fight, Brent is, you know, we go through this whole bisexual blah 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 thing. And he finally says, if you're so interested in being a lesbian, why you don't just go and be in New York City? Just get up and just go visit. I hear when it is that you throw a rock in New York City, you lick seven lesbians with the one rock. <laughs> <laughs> so thick is the lesbian like you know population in New York that yes, you know, whatever. <laughs> so I buy a ticket and I decide to go to New York City. When the plane lands, the New York City lights blink in code. As if they're saying, welcome to the city station. Yeah? I'm staying with my mother's older brother David in the projects in Brooklyn. The dim hallways reek of urine and the noise of boys fighting and sirens outside the window is unbearable. One night when I'm taking the garbage to the incinerator, a tall fat man with a run nose offers me $20 to give him a blow job. I drop the garbage in the hallway and scream for my uncle David who comes barreling out the front door with a knife. The fat man quickly ambles away before I can find the words to say what happened. My uncle David hugs me and warns me to avoid the other people who live in the apartment. I spend the hot and humid days roaming the city. A dollar twenty-five gets me anywhere on the subway. And in New York is in the house. It's now like like two seventy-five. Yeah. <laughs> and I love to stand on the platform and watch the gigantic metal structure squeal to a halt. Then I hop into the middle car and attempt a small talk with other passengers. Hi. <laughs> My name is Stacy Anton. What's your name? People look at me like I'm fucking crazy. <laughs> Only the other tourists talk to me. <laughs> in Union Square, I meet a man who was born in South Africa of Dutch parents, raised in London. His wife is Somalian, and they're both moving to Italy after their summer vacation in New York and Toronto. I feel cosmopolitan just talking to him. <laughs> the chic Asian girls in Banana Republic jackets quickly rush by me. Caribbean restaurants. Slim dark men in leather suits, pornographic bookstores, black girls with Afro mohawks, white girls with pink hair line the streets. One afternoon, I venture into a bar called the Stonewall Inn. Mm -hmm. A white man dressed in a blonde wig and women's clothing offers to buy me a drink. So where are you from, honey? His voice is husky and his mascara is running, so he looks a bit like a raccoon in secret. <laughs> <laughs> I sit my ginger in and I whisper, I'm from Jamaica. Jamaican. <laughs> oh God, I had a Jamaican lover once. He had the biggest dick I'd ever seen. I always had to stay in bed after we fucked. I couldn't walk. You should have seen me, honey. I would be laid out like a dead body for days. And he had to leave him when it got ridiculous. He wanted to fuck me every day. I think I'd be a wheelchair if I kept up with that boy. <laughs> now me, I think is the most difficult thing in the whole wide world. 
Not that you would care, you're a lesbian, right? Um, <laughs> I wouldn't say exactly, I mean, I, I'm not sure. I, I mean, I have feelings, but I mean, I don't know. Oh, Jesus Christ. You ain't gotta know just yet. You're young, you'll figure it out. Or maybe you won't, but whatever it is, just fucking go with it. This is fucking New York City, you can be anything you goddamn wanna be. And I'm not one of them, maybe I'm a dyke, maybe I'm not a dyke. I see a little tip that I need to go swallow up in that corner. There's something thrilling about the way he said fuck and dick out loud in public. In Jamaica, I could get killed for talking about the things I want to do to a woman. I'm almost halfway through my trip when I discovered the bookstores. A different light, Oscar Wilde, the revolutionary bookstore, the People's Republic of Anti-Imperialist Literature, the names on the book, on the signs, draw me in. I find a volume of short stories with the true lesbian love stories. And I have to tell you about this true lesbian love story, right? <laughs> Two fucking like Montana lesbians, right? <laughs> in wherever the fuck they are in Montana, right? <laughs> they are in fucking Montana. They are like chilling. They're like, you know, having this secret affair for like maybe two days or whatever. And then they decide they're gonna like confront their parents, right? They're gonna confront their families and force them to accept who they are. And they go and they confront them and the family is like, you know, the mother is like, oh my god, you're my daughter, I love you anyways. And then the father is like a little bit stony at first, but then like he gets a little tear and then he's like all great and they come out and it's fabulous and then they have like a fucking like wedding and everybody comes and it's great and I'm like, yes, I'm going to Jamaica to come out of the fucking oh. <laughs> Because, you know, I mean, how many times, I mean, I don't know, I don't know if anybody else, but how many times have you read stories about people, like maybe like rich white people? And then you're like, I'm going to live the same way. <laughs> I'm going to go home and tell my Muslim grandmother that I need to see and she should just learn to accept it. <laughs> this is exactly what's going to happen in my life. Because I am following the coming out book. <laughs> this is the advice they give me on coming out so I'm going to take the advice. I'm going to get brave on the motherfucker and I'm going to like, come home. And I go home and I, you know, I came out to Raquel and um, it went kind of well because you know she was like a gay as well. <laughs> <laughs> and then like I, I, you know, I came out to like you know Brant and Annabella and they were like, oh sure, yeah, mm -hmm. <laughs> didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> and then I, you know, like, I came out to one other person and then it got weird and then I came out to another person and then it got weirder and then like the circle of violence started to begin in terms of the way that people still spoke to me. They started to like you know. You People like saying words like pedophile to me in the, in the hallway at school. You hear, um, you know, boys like whisper things like, um, "You ain't had nothing yet. If I ever catch you, blah blah blah, then I'll show you blah blah blah." And then one day, um, the, you know, so they always throw these arguments at me. And then one day, I'm walking across the campus, and one of them <laughs> says some shit to me, and I'm like angry, and I'm like, "Fuck, man!" And I respond. And he responds, and then the other one starts saying something, and I'm like cussing him out, like, oh, you are all a bunch of like fucking fucks, you know, you just so pray I'm gonna fuck a girl, and she's gonna like have a better time, and that really like going at them. And uh, one of them pulls my backpack, and I go after him in the backpack, and before you know it, I'm inside the bathroom, and they're 12 of them around me, and they sexually assault me, and I come out of that, and I say to myself, I don't wanna be in Jamaica. So I said to myself, I am coming to America. Because America has the anthem that says the home of the brave, the land of the fucking free. So I'm gonna go there and be free. Right? I'm gonna like pick up my courage and go to be there, right? Because that's where freedom is manufactured. So I'm going to be where like, you know, like China for like plastic goods now, right? <laughs> so I'm going to America for freedom, right? <laughs> So I fucking moved to America. I, I don't know what the fuck I thought. Me and the fucking eight white lesbians who live on Fifth Avenue were gonna be like splitting down. <laughs> and I'm like, oh fuck, shit, I forgot I'm black. <laughs> shit, man, somebody should have fucking told me that before I moved. I might have moved to like, I don't know, where's the Black Haven for gayness? Toronto. Toronto? Up here. <laughs> it's not that, it's not that, yeah, yeah it's a little descent, y'all need to get your story straight. <laughs> <laughs> so anyways, like, I mean, I, I got to the, the US and I was like very like deeply disappointed with like the race politics I found there. And uh, a woman invited me to the New Reconvoids Cafe and then she didn't come. 
couldn't meet me. Not like they had sex and she didn't come. And uh, I kind of got into poetry. And like I was there that night, and I think Sarah Jones was performing that night, and I was like, oh my god, what the fuck is happening in this place? I want to do it too. So I took out my journal and I ran up to the microphone and I did my little poem, like something like, I want to be in. I'm a woman with like breasts and breasts and great. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and then everybody was like, at the end of the night, I could And I was like, oh my god, this is so great. And so I hooked up with like a bunch of like um, crazy anarchists. Lower East Side, crazy motherfucking poison with the different color hair <laughs> and with fucking head shaped sideways. <laughs> Just weird ass inclusive politics and I, I kind of belong to them. Like mm -hmm. like people who are like trans or people who are black and like, you know like they were like, you know, born again Christians who believe in like freedom and truth. And then you had like fucking I don't know, there's a whole range of motherfuckers, like, you know. There's a girl in there who like, you know, she liked to, whenever she wrote a poem, she would like stroke her pet turtle. <laughs> 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 Weird, One night I went to a poetry reading where the person who performed before me was the person who was like swallowing live goldfish. And I know there are fucking pizza people in the audience, but I'm, I, I don't say this live yet. I frown on it. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, then, and then the person who performed after me was like a, a gay man, like with only like foil on his penis. That's what he was wearing. <laughs> like maybe like a, a, you know like a, a twelve-inch strip of foil wrapped around his penis. So there was a girl who was like eating like swallowing goldfish live, and every time she swallowed one, the crowd would roar. It's kind of like um, Rome in the Colosseum, you know. <laughs> and you know, and, and and then you know the man who came after him, I went up and did my poem, and people were like. Woo! And then like the next person was like, you know, just I I, I want to say he was dancing, but I wouldn't. <laughs> but all he was wearing was a piece of foil, and I was just I was in deep admiration for his bravery, you know. So I came off the stage, and then there was a girl like who was dressed in like a lizard outfit, slithering around on the floor. You are familiar with these places in Toronto? I've seen, I've seen the motherfucking like spaces. Anyway, so that's how I became a poet. And now, like, um, you know, I don't really know what to do, what, what to read, but I have like a stack of poems up there. How are you doing? And you're hearing me okay, and you're managing the heat? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. This is like the coolest day of summer. Yeah. 